Hi everyone, my name is Marink Spasiewicz and in this video I will show you an alternative way of logging in ASP.NET Core applications using OpenTelemetry. Logging is one of the most well-known debugging tools for developers. It allows us to record timestamped information about the current state of our application. In the OpenTelemetry project, logs are one of the main parts, along with tracing and metrics. In this video, you will see how we can combine traces with logs to gain better insights into our application. As usual, if you like the video, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons. It helps me a lot and supports this channel as well. Now, let's continue with this topic. In .NET, we use the iLogger interface to create log messages and since multiple providers are registered by default, we can clear those providers and register only the ones we want. In this case, I will register the console provider and the debug provider. Now, before I continue, I would like to let you know about our products. Currently, we have the Ultimate ASP.NET Core Web API book to create production ready web APIs and Blazor WebAssembly course you can use to create client C -sharp apps without using JavaScript. Of course, new courses are almost here, so if you subscribe, you will be notified once the new courses are published. Ok, let's continue with my controller. I can use the mentioned iLogger interface as a private read-only field and inject the service using the constructor with a generic type parameter. Also, inside the get action, I can use the logger service to log messages with different log levels. Also, since I want to use a debug log level and I'm in the development mode right now, I have to modify the app settings configuration file, but for the development. And here, I will modify the default log level as debug. Now, I can run the app and send a request from Postman. Ok, at this point, since I registered both the console and the debug providers, I can check the console logs first and also the debug output. And we can see all three log messages in both places. So, this is fine start, but we can enhance these logs with open telemetry. As we previously saw, we use the iLogger interface to create log messages in .NET. Fortunately, open telemetry uses this interface to manage its logs, so we don't need to change our existing log messages. We simply need to configure our logger to use open telemetry. To do this, first, we need to install the open telemetry dot exporter dot console nugget package. After the installation is done, I can reconfigure my logger inside the program class. So I need to call the add open telemetry method to add the open telemetry logger and use the options parameter to export the logs to the console. That's all it takes. And I can run my app again and check the logs. Here we see much more structured and informative log messages. We receive all the information for the log, such as timestamp, category name and severity, as individual properties, along with the service name, which is the name of our application. Now that our logs are using OpenTelemetry to export to the console, let's look at how we can enrich our log data. The first and simplest enrichment we can achieve is to add a meaningful service name. Currently, our service name is unknown service, open telemetry logging, which is pulled from our .NET project name. Well, let's improve this. I need to set the resource builder first. And then use the resource builder class with the create default method to create a default builder. Then I can call the add service method to name our service logging.net. Great, let's run the app again. And now our service name displays logging.net correctly. Also, we now get a new property service.instance.id. This allows us to identify a specific instance of our application should we be running multiple instances, for example, behind a load balancer to support high availability. Another enhancement we can provide for our logging is scoping. 
Scopes allows us to group logical sets of operations so they can be correlated in observability tools. That said, let's have a look at how we can use scopes for grouping log messages. To demonstrate this, I'll create a simple login functionality, starting with a user record. So let's create a new class, name it user, and make it a record. I will add two properties here, a string username and a string password. Next, I want to create a new interface file. And let's name it iUserService. Here, I will create one member named login with two parameters, string username and string password. Then, of course, I need a service class. And let's name it UserService. So, this class must inherit from the iUser service interface, and I will add the missing member right away. Then, to simulate a login logic, let's simply add a list of users first, in this case a single user. Then, I will use the iLogger interface to log some messages, so I need it as a field. And also, let's use a constructor to inject the service. Just, it must be a generic one. Now, inside the login method, let's add a simple login logic. This method simply checks if there is a matching user in our users list, logging the outcome. You see, I use the begin scope method on the logger field to create a scope providing the username as a parameter for the state. This ensures any logging done within this scope will have the username attached to it, as you will shortly see. The rest of the code is simply checking if the user exists and logging some messages. Ok, before I run the application again, I need to register our service with the service collection and ensure scopes are enabled for our logs. So first let's register this new service as a scope service using both the interface and the class implementation. And then I can modify the login configuration. All I have to do is to set the include scopes property to true. By default, it's set to false. Now, inside my controller, I will create another private read only field for my iUser service interface named user service, and I will add it as an additional parameter inside the constructor. Also, inside the get action, I will use my new service to call the login method and provide the required arguments for the username and the password. Great. Let's run the app again and send the request from Postman. If we check the logs from the action, we can see they have an additional scope, username, while the previous logs don't have that scope. Great. Now, let's see how we can correlate logs with traces in our app. When we're considering the correlation between logs and traces, we need to determine the best identifier for our traces that we can attach to our logs. Fortunately, we will have a trace identifier that is perfect for this. Moreover, we will also have a span identifier which allows us to identify individual events within a trace. A great benefit of OpenTelemetry is that it configures this correlation for us by default. All we need to do is ensure we are using the OpenTelemetry tracing and logging client libraries. So, the first thing I will do here is to install a few more libraries. I need the OpenTelemetry.extensions.hosting library first, and then the OpenTelemetry. Instrumentation ASP.NET Core Package. After these packages are installed, I can prepare some simple tracing for my app. So, let's call the add OpenTelemetry method, which is an extension method that adds OpenTelemetry services to the service collection. Next, 
I need the with tracing method to configure tracing. It accepts a lambda expression where you can set up the tracing configuration. With the builder parameter available, let's use it to call the add source method to specify a source of traces. Then I need the add ASP.NET Core instrumentation method to add the instrumentation of ASP.NET Core. It means that the tracing system will automatically collect telemetry data for HTTP requests, responses and other relevant ASP.NET Core operations. After that, I need to set the resource builder in the same way I did for the login configuration. And with the default builder created, I can add the service tracing.net. Lastly, let's export the trace data to the console. Now, let's run our application, send the postman request, and see our correlation in action. Here, we still have our two log messages, but this time they have some new properties attached to them, specifically logrecord.traceID and logrecord.spanID. Also, we now have a trace event in our console, and if we look at the activity.traceID, and activity.spanid properties, we notice they match the values for our log records. This allows us to correlate our logging and tracing data, which can be very useful for debugging purposes. We can also use visualization tools to allow for easy searching and correlation of this data. These trace and span ID values are the same for our two user logs and the other three control logs, because they are all part of the single group. Well, let's visualize that. For the visualization, I will use the Jaeger tool. To set it up, I need my Docker desktop running. Then, let's use this Jaeger command to be able to use the tool locally. With it, we will install the Jaeger locally and it will run inside my Docker desktop. Now, in my app, I need one more package. So let's install the OpenTelemetry.exporter.jager package. With it installed, all I need to do is call the addJager exporter method inside the tracing configuration. That's all. Now I can run the app, send the Postman request, navigate to the Jager UI page and find the traces for the tracing.net service. As you can see, we have only one trace data related to a single span ID, which is the same as the one in our console logs. But let's see how we can separate those traces. For that, I will modify my user service class as I want those traces to be a separate group. So let's add a new read only field of the activity source type named activity source and let's instantiate it with the name of the source also inside the login method inside the using block i will create a new activity variable and use the activity source field to call the start activity method and provide the name for this activity at this point a new activity will be started as you are about to see so Let's repeat our testing actions by starting the app and sending the request from Postman. And now let's inspect the UI. This time we see two spans. And if I open this, I see the API logging action and the logging action. You can also see both are connected to different span IDs. Those are the same IDs you can find in the console logs. You see, this one is connected to API logging action and this one is connected to the login action. Great, but we still can't see our logs in our UI. To be able to do that, we have to do some manual coding. To start, let's create our own processor to intercept our log data and add it to the current trace if it exists. I will name the class activity event log processor. This class inherits 
from a generic base processor class with a log record generic parameter. This is a generic base class that is designed to process log record objects, which represents log entries in OpenTelemetry. Now I will override the onEnd method. Inside it, I will call the base class implementation of onEnd. It ensures that any processing logic defined in the base class is executed. This is common practice when you want to extend or add functionality without completely overriding the existing behavior. Then let's create a current activity variable and set it to activity.current, which retrieves the current activity object. An activity represents a unit of work or a trace span, and it is a part of the OpenTelemetry API used to capture and manage distributed tracing. Finally, using the current activity variable, I want to add a new event to the event list. And for that, I will use the new activity event instance, where I have to pass the data dot attributes property converted to a string. That's all regarding this class. And all I have to do is modify the login configuration inside the program class. Here, I need to call the add processor method and provide an instance of my newly created processor. That's it. One more time, let's run the app, send the Postman request, and check the UI. Again, I can find two traces, but now for each one, I see the logs. Awesome. As you probably know, logging is one of the most important aspects when developing applications. In this video, you saw how we can plug our existing application logging into OpenTelemetry as well as enrich our log data with more useful information. Finally, when working with OpenTelemetry, we usually instrument our applications with tracing. So we looked at how to correlate our existing logging with tracing to enhance our debugging skills and gain better insight into the performance and state of our applications. If you liked the video and found it useful, please don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons and the bell button to receive notifications of my future videos. Thank you for watching and stay tuned for new ones to come. Until then, all the best.